thought I'd start this video with an introduction to my new workshop assistant. I don't know whether you can see him or her, but right in there is a little robin's nest. I'd been confused as to how this thing kept getting in, assuming that it was flying in when I walked in and I didn't see it and um, then got shut in when I walked out, but it doesn't. It actually comes in and out through that hole up there and it's made a nest and it's got uh, three or four eggs in there, which is nice. But uh, yeah, so I'm trying to spend as little time in my little stalls bit and more time outside so I don't disturb it. But um, yeah, so that's my glamorous assistant, Robin. He's crap at welding, but um, I don't know what Robins are actually good for other than following you around and getting annoying. Back to car stuff. Uh, the hydrate 80 that I put on in this area has all fully gone off. I've got most of the panel trimmed up how I need it, but I need to repair this section next. So I'm going to see uh, what access is like when I'm actually holding grinders and things in there. But the plan is cut all of that out and then I can use that panel that I made up the other day as a repair section for that because I won't be using it for the B pillar. So that's my rough cut bit to go in there. I'm going to take it into the workshop where I've got that vice set up and just hammer that corner a bit sharper. Then I'll uh, trim it, weld it in. Well, it's in there. I've got one small magnet holding it. Annoyingly, and I still don't really understand how I managed to do it, I've sanded off far too much of the metal here. Oh, cock. Uh, so it does fit but just not as neatly as I would have hoped. I think I sanded it to try and get myself a nice gap to get good weld penetration, but um, obviously that's a bit too big. It's not the end of the world because I can shape this out or move that in. <clears throat> I don't really want to disturb it because of course that's all original, but um, we'll just go and get the welder now and um, blob it in, tack it, and then see how the final fit is and then um, worry about it. Just tacked it in there. That was with the welder set to one max, which is setting two out of my six available. So pretty low considering how thick this is, but that's because of the way I've prepared it really. I can kind of cheat this slightly. If I unbend that corner, I can close that gap up just think is what I'm going to do then I can um, fill in the world a bit easier while I was tacking it I didn't have my welding gauntlets on just means you're a bit more dexterous still 
still got the welder set quite low. I'm just going to tack that bit first, and then I can crank it up a bit. Again, I've got the garage doors closed because I've been making so much noise recently. I think my neighbours hate me. some quite heavy tacks in there now. I'm going to turn the wire feed up a little bit and try and seam that in. I could also do cleaning some of this up. So I've still got the Hydrate 80 on there. nip the top off some of the tacks just so that the next set of welds can um, get decent penetration rather than striking up on top of these perp beads. Do some proper welding, hopefully. I'm going to turn the welder up a little bit more. It's just the welds are just sitting on the top at the moment. things kind of glowing orange <laughs> so you can tell it was wax oil So 
some of this I can actually weld from underneath if I need to. Just um, welded that bit from the back as well because I want to sand that so it's nice and smooth so I want need extra material so I don't end up cutting through into a big void behind. Alright now to try and snot the top together. That's quite handy. I'll just get the gun in. Right, this is welding really badly because the cavity wax is burning off the underside and the gases are coming through and blowing away the shielding gas. So if I was not quite as lazy as I am, I'd probably go and get some panel wipe and clean the back side of this off first, but I really can't be bothered, so I'm going to try and burn through it instead. Once you've got good metal, if you can get the weld into that and drag it out, you don't have to degrease stuff. Well, you probably should, but I'm not bothering. That is first pre-cleanup welding done. You can see how some of them I was able to do from the backside. I'm gonna get my scratchy grindy nasty tools now. Hopefully that hasn't ruined the lens um, and clean some of this up. Sorry about that. So that's welded in now. The top, I'm not gonna bother rubbing down anymore because all I'll do is lose strength. You're never gonna see it, it as long as it's protected. Good enough for me. That's all nice and smooth with a tiny skim of filler. It'll be fine. This bit will be all hidden behind where that panel comes down and welds to it. And then the rear bit is all lost behind the inner wing, uh, sorry, the outer wing. Um, so I'm going to get some zinc now and just tosh that in there and then I can get on with doing the final prep and then start tacking in that real rear inner wheel well. So it's not perfect by any means but compared to the rusty holes we had previously that's all gone, all solid metal, decent protection and a good basis for welding back onto. So as I said I'm going to start prepping the weird arch lip particularly the bottom corners and then that can go in. I've wedged the wheel arch lip in there. I, I've tried to explain this several times and I think I might have failed every single time. This bit, the middle bit of the wheel arch, I want to weld with this sat on top of the original part. But obviously when I get to this bit I want it to sit outside. No, inside. Um, again, here I am failing to try and explain it. Uh, rather than cut it into three separate pieces, I just cut slots and that allows me to tuck one on one side and the other get the other side. And the benefit of not having chopped into pieces, I don't have to worry about the spatial relationship between that and the full wheel arch length back to there. So <clears throat> it's just an easy way of me doing a bit of origami to get that in there without fanning around too much. Um, last time I think I talked about having to seam weld these two panels together 
and then cut the flange off the back so that will sit flat that can go in there i'll also drill a plug weld hole here so that i can go through onto the remains of the old um, seam there to, to hold that tight i've marked where i need to clean off all the under seal and stuff but other than that we're not a million miles away from at least beginning to tack that in so i'll whip that back off drill the plug weld hole clean off all the under seal where i'm going to be welding then get ready to weld it much grinding later I didn't bother recording it because it's kind of boring but yeah that's all cleaned off cleaned off in down here as well one thing i forgot was that i've got to repair that bit there but i'm going to leave that until i come to build the back of the sill and although it means i'll be welding upside down past the trading arm area um I'm hopeful that if I leave this off, I'll actually be able to get to it from this side, so it shouldn't be too bad. Now that's all cleaned off, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of zinc on it again. There's there's no actual rust that needs treating. I just, um, I've chopped out the rust that was there. This is just to make it a bit prettier. Um, so there we go. This, I will give a very quick grind over as well because I won't be able to get to that afterwards and I don't want rust trapped between the two flanges so I'll clean that up next hmm okay you know in these videos how I always try and not hide my fuck-ups well this is another one where it's not quite a fuck-up yet but it's probably closer than I would have liked when I first cut this panel out of my donor panel i used the original off cut from the car laid it on top chopped it oversized so thinking this would be more than ample and then um, offered it up however if i clamp that bottom piece nicely in there with the height correct to the bottom of the existing inner wheel well and that seam which is the return from the boot floor. And if I get the front end in the right place, as referenced from that wheel well, the original, to here, clamped in, looking all nice, and I've got that step in about the right place as well. When I do that, the wheel arch doesn't want to sit up above this bit. So I think I've chopped off rather too much of this than I needed and as another demonstration remember my reference marks that I'd taken that should be 140 to the outside of the new wheel arch lip so that is in about the right place it doesn't want to go in or up too much more and then my reference measurement from in here was 303 millimeters so it could go in a touch but it's never going to go in enough to close up that gap um, so what I think has happened is I've screwed up a bit, but I'm not, I'm going to like, uh, make a massive disclaimer here and blame somebody else. But I think, um, of course, all of this is nothing to do with me and it's to do with whoever beat the hell out of the inner wing originally and deformed it that much. Um, but that changes the way in which I'm going to go about this. Originally, I was going to clean all this back de-rust it, zinc prime it, you name it, do it all. But I'm gonna end up with next to no overlap between the two panels anyway. Part of this is gonna end up being butt welded. So what I'm gonna do instead is put a couple of tacks in here, try the outer skin on for size, um, and then reassess the whole situation. So yeah, it's not a complete fuck up yet, but uh, close to being one. Okay, so what I did was tack the inner wheel well in a couple of places, then I've offered the outer wing up and I've aligned it with the scallopy thing at the back, um, clamped it in here where it wants to sit, and then I've got the curve about the same height as on here, but down here it's a bit too long 
which means the whole panel wants to go up or rotate around backwards a little bit. I think I'll try that first. I'll move the whole thing backwards and I'll ignore the fact that this seam is here for the moment. You can actually see a slight buckle in it there. Um, but what it's telling me is that the inner wheel well is about right where I've got it. So um, I can probably weld it where it is. There's one bit that concerns me which you can't see so well. And that is just how far off this wing is sitting above here. Now, I haven't changed where that is because I haven't moved where this is. It can go in or out, but um, I'm slightly worried that maybe when this car had a smack, this bit wasn't pulled out right. I don't know, it might be something I've done, but we shall see. I'm just gonna unclip that wing and try and reposition it further around, sort of clockwise, if you imagine that as a clock face. I'm not going to lie, this still fits where it touches and then there's gappy bits all over the places. So I'm going to take some time to beat the two panels roughly into a line without changing how high or how far out that wheel arch lip is. So this might take a while, cue a sped up montage bit. Lame. I just broke the tacks, which is what I didn't want to do. Balls. This is why stuff like this is so time consuming. To get it right takes forever. To do a shit job can take about 15 minutes, but it's one step forward, two steps back, or vice versa, I don't know. It's tiring. In hindsight, those tacks breaking might have been good. It actually made it easier to beat the panel into shape and I'm kind of realising that actually once it's constrained at the bottom corners this can't go up or very far in or out um, without making sense so it's, it's kind of reassuring in a way actually already good right happy with that now I 
can tack it some more and then weld it. I can feel myself starting to rush and get a bit slapdash and I think it's about 8 o'clock now I've been doing this a couple of hours um, so I'm going to sack it off there's been a lot of fanning around tonight without massive amounts of progress but sometimes it's just like that and I have to think well that's a big chunk of metal put back in in the right place so before I screw it up I'm going to go home, well, up the garden, and then drink some cider and eat some pork scratchings. So, see you later.